Hello and welcome to Liz at Home. This is another Watercolour Wednesday. Today I'm going to be doing a colour mixing chart and I'm going to be using a limited palette to do this chart. I've got six colours and I've listed them across the top and then down the side and the two blanks are just because I made a mistake and I'm going to be writing the colour names in again right now just of those two places so from left to right I've got Daniel Smith Hansa yellow right Hansa yellow light then core quinacridone gold then Windsor and Newton Cotman Elizabeth and Crimson Hue then core quinacridone magenta then Daniel Smith French ultramarine then Daniel Smith Thalo turquoise and in that order I've listed them down the side as well and what I'm going to be doing is mixing those colors together. I've got a palette here for mixing that is just a little bit of paint there that I don't want to waste. I've got my um, round brush which is a size six. You could use any brush you liked for this and any palette you like and I'm going to be just quickly cleaning out little bits that are left in the palette I thought I had it clean and because I do want it clean for mixing the colors so we get a true um, a true version of what the color mixes will look like and I will be using this palette throughout I also have my paper towel and a vessel of clean water. I've actually got two vessels of water. So what I'm going to do in this particular way of mixing the colors is starting with a Hansa yellow light, which is a cool yellow. So each color, they're the primary colors. There's a cool and a warm yellow, cool and a warm red, cool and a warm blue. My warm yellow, I'm not totally certain of. I'm doing this as a bit of a, an experiment to see how it turns out. But I saw Emma Lefebvre showing us how to do this on her channel a while ago, a couple of years ago. And she did this method of doing the lighter tone on the right, like a lighter tonal value and a darker tonal value on the left. And so diagonally going across, I'm going to be doing that with each of the colors, which will be the actual color that you see. So that first one there is the Daniel Smith Hansa Yellow Light. Now we're using Core Quinacridone Gold and I'm just mixing brands. So I start with this light mix and then I put the darker value on top of it just for ease the core colors actually travel a lot and so this is giving me just a little bit of um, of a problem in that I don't want it all going into where I've got the light eternal value so I was just I rinsed my brush out and I dab it on the paper towel to lift some of that color off and to dry the area a bit so that it doesn't travel so much. Now we're going on to the light red, the not the light red, forgive me. Now we're going on to the cool red, which is the Windsor & Newton Cotman Elizabeth Crimson Hue. I think it's a cool red. I'm not entirely sure, but to my eye, it looks like a cool red. And I only have the Cotman version of this. I don't have the professional watercolor. And I recently filled my half pan up, so it's still a little bit damp in the pan. And I'm just putting more. The Cotmans are not as deeply pigmented as the professional watercolor paints are because they're a student brand, but they're actually great paints. There's absolutely nothing wrong with them. So I'm just filling in the darker value. I think it's really nice to have the both the light value and the dark value on the same chart because a light value looks like a different color 
if you were using color pencils, for instance, you would have two pencils for that. And there with the one paint, you've got two colors. And there with the three paints, you've got three colors. Just the Hansa Yellow Light is um, even the dark eternal value is very similar to the to the lighter value and in case you don't know with watercolors to make a color lighter you just add more water so now we're going with the warm red and that's called quinacridone magenta this is a color that really has great fun playing on the paper it tends to travel when you're doing wet on wet technique in an extremely pleasing manner. And I'm a little bit concerned about what it's going to do here where I want it a bit controlled. You can see how it moves. I just love that for me. That's so satisfying to see. So I'm going to have to just rinse my brush out, try it on a paper towel and lift some of that water off there so that it doesn't all go there and spoil the effect of the light tonal value. Those are two very pleasing colors to my eye. <laughs> and now we're going on to Daniel Smith, French Ultramarine. I well, I love all of these colors. It's why I chose them and chose to mix them because I was thinking of making a traveling palette for myself and seeing what all I could get with them and whether I would be able to paint florals as well as landscapes with them. So now we're going to the warm blue, which is really a turquoise, but I'm using this Daniel Smith Thalo turquoise. It's again a very pleasing color and it's one of my favorite colors to use for the sea or for water. So I did these two and I'm just letting the paint soak in a bit because of, of the, the spreadability of the paint when I put the darker value in. I just wanted it to have a moment or two to dry on the paper. The French Ultramarine also moves very pleasingly. I think it might be a fun project actually let me know in the comments if you'd like me to do a watercolor and doodles or an abstract watercolor playing with the, these two colors the core quinacridone magenta and the daniel smith french ultramarine because they both move and play so nicely and now this daniel smith thalo turquoise oh it's also very satisfying color. I just love it. I love watercolor paints. I really do. They just please me so much. They fill my heart with joy. So now you can see we've completed the first step in this process, which is the actual colors, the, the core colors, not the Q-O-R, but the C-O-R-E colors of the, of the color mixing project. And now I'm going to put my first color to mix, which is the Hansa Yellow Light, into one, two, three, four, five different wells, because I want to mix Hansa Yellow Light now with each of the remaining colors, which is the quinacridone gold, yellowsarin crimson, the quinacridone magenta, the French ultramarine, and the thalo turquoise. So I'm putting them on the side of each well. And the reason I'm doing this is so that I can keep my brush from, so that I can stop my brush from contaminating, as it were, the, the half pan when I put the color that I'm going to mix because this is such a pale color that um, if I've got some some other color on my brush it will very easily spoil the experiment or the color mixing by adding too much of a different color. So now we're going to add a little bit of quinacridone gold 
And I'm doing it like this so I can try to have a kind of a 50-50 mixture. So I'm going into my half pan. Quinacridone gold's quite a an interesting colour to me because it looks like a brown in the pan. And it sort of looks like a brown there. But you can see when it's the light value. Uh, you'll you'll see now when I put down the two mix together, it actually looks orangey, which is perfect, which one wants. Almost one a dark rich gold but it almost looks like a raw sienna as well but now I'm adding water to my brush so I'm making the tonal value lighter and I'm painting in the lighter tonal value and you can see it's most definitely a yellow there gold and yellow very beautiful really interesting color to play with if you're looking for some interesting new paints I do find this quinacridone gold, either the Daniel Smith or the Core, interesting. Now this is the Winsor & Newton Alizarin Crimson Hue, and that's what I have on my palette already. I had a little bit still of the quinacridone gold on my brush or the mixture, so I just needed to clean it more. And mixing those two together I think I need more of the of the reddish color the alizarin crimson and because now it's interesting to me how these two land up almost the same color I decide to to add I'm adding a bit more of the alizarin crimson to it because it's it's not really giving the deeper darker color that it should have in my opinion <laughs> so here's the lighter value i set up this little chart with these tiny little washi tapes you can use with these thin ones i'll put a link to a very thin one you can get on amazon this is a bit thicker than i would have liked but it's one I bought here. I didn't think it was worth spending the money to import the other. But I've seen a lovely thin one. Now I'm mixing the Hansa Yellow Light with the warm red, which is the Quinacridone Magenta. And you can see this is a beautiful rich orange. I find that also a very satisfying colour. It looks to me like cakes or something, like a or or tangerines or I'm not quite sure what. And now the the light value, which makes me think of all the lovely macaron colours that one gets these days in colour pencils and things. Beautiful, beautiful colours. I think so anyway. Now we're going to go on to the blues. So blue and yellow make green. So I'm interested to see what the greens are going to be like. And this for me is a gorgeous green. It's kind of a, a dull, I just think it would make the most absolutely fabulous leaves and things if I was trying to do a floral bouquet. So so many beautiful flower colors and then look at this for greenery i think this is going to make a really nice travel palette for myself for when we go on holiday again and then i only need to take six paints with and now i need to rinse the brush out i put a really as much paint as i can into that square for the dark mix and now rinse the brush off and then use the that watery mixture for the light tonal color. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? It would also actually make a very pretty color of a seaside cottage or something. And now the final one in this mixture, which is with the Thalo Turquoise. Now those are two very bright colors, so I'm expecting a kind of a startling green. It'll be interesting to see what happens.
and that is a very bright green. Now one can play with these colors even more than just this mixing. You can add them in different proportions. So for instance, if I wanted this sort of a bright color, but I wanted to tone it down just a little bit more, I would add a bit more, I would add a third color actually, I would add a bit of one of the reds, which is on the opposite side of the color wheel and that would sort of just tone it down a bit but that's another story let me know if you want me to do more of this color mixing with you if you're interested in it i'd love to know and also please let me know what you would like me to do in the watercolor wednesdays would you like me to maybe do try my hand at florals which i'm not very good at i keep trying or would you like me to do another landscape? Or would you like another watercolor and doodles, which I love doing? So I'm happy to do any of those things. I just love watercolors. Or I can use my watercolor pencils in a coloring book if you'd like me to do that. Or I can pre-prepare a page with a medium and then use the watercolors from the watercolor half pans or the dried watercolors in a coloring book that's got a pre-prepared page with the medium to to keep the to allow it to accept the water more easily let me know which of those things you would like to see so now we're on to the next color which is the core quinacridone gold and now there are only one two three four spaces left so I'm putting those into my palette and then I'm going to mix them again and do the same as I've been doing before mixing them with the colors and the first one is the Winsor & Newton Cartman Elizabeth and Crimson Hue and we're mixing that isn't that a gorgeous rich gold that's really quite interesting so that's a very orangey, goldy color, I think. Okay, so on we go. And once we've done this, then we need to do the lighter value. And I'm going to continue in this way until I've filled all the blocks in. And while I do this, I'll zoom into the the area that's being painted and I'm going to put some music on for you and I hope that you enjoy it.
we're getting on and what do you think of the colors? I think there are really some very nice colors that have happened because of this and I find it quite magical. Some of the greens look the same, which is interesting to me, not so much in the full tonal value, but when they are, when they, when, when they're in the lighter value, they, especially the last two, look quite similar. I started getting a little bit confused with with the with the light ones i find doing the the full tonal value the full value easy and then i get a bit confused about where i'm supposed to be putting <laughs> the lighter ones i think i did four of these little swatch charts or not swatch charts color mixing charts before i finally got to this one and got it right because i continuously made mistakes. I think that I really struggle with anything that has any sort of logical kind of way of working. I think my brain does not like logic. It likes to just do its own thing. So I'm cleaning the palette again and I've gone through quite a lot of baby wipes to get to this stage. <laughs> Keeping the market going with that. And we've got not a lot left to do. So now we're into our final two, which is the French Ultramarine and the Daniel Smith Thalo Turquoise. So because they've all been mixed previously, it's, it gets quicker as we go along. I love these purples and violets. I think they're so pretty. I really do. I think they're, they're just gorgeous. And I like that kind of dark blue as well at the bottom. It's, it's uh, an interesting color. And I'm actually excited to, to paint something using some of these mixed colors. I mean, if you wanted, you if you wanted to, and if you had two paints, you could mix pans of these colors yourself as well to have the convenience. But I like being able to mix on the go and just enjoying myself. I'm sure if one was painting in a large format, you would need to mix prior to doing it so that you had enough of the same color and didn't run out. But my kind of hobbyist painting I'm fine doing it this way. Let me know if you've ever done one of these before and how many colors you did it. Because you, it doesn't have to be six. You could do it with eight. You could do it with nine. And then it's just got to be the same number across and down and keep mixing. And it's a, a great thing to do once you figure out what you're doing. Um, if you're feeling that kind of feeling of, oh dear, what shall I paint? And I don't feel inspired, but I feel like painting. It's a, a great way to put paint to paper. And you don't need to use expensive watercolor paper for this. You do need to use watercolor paper, but you could use your sketchbook or any paper because you're not doing, you're not throwing lots of water at it and you're not doing wet on wet techniques or anything of that nature. I'd be very, very interested to know how you guys have found this video because I'm trying out a new video editor and I'm not sure whether I should go for the paid version of this editor or not. I think there's going to be a small watermark on it with this video because I'm just trying it out. My other one has been causing me a lot of problems and that's why I didn't get a Watercolor Wednesday video up last week because everything I did just stuck and got, I don't know, nothing was working. I spent about two days trying to get a video to work, hours and hours. So I'm trying this one out. This is a Filmora editor. And if any of you have got an editor that you absolutely swear by, or if you use Filmora, let me know if you happen to also be YouTubers or video makers. 
I'm always interested. I'm not an expert on this and I'm learning on the go, as it were. And so now we are into our final square, which is mixing phthalo turquoise with French ultramarine, which is quite interesting. That'll make a kind of a blue. It actually lands up looking very close to the to the pure color of the French ultramarine. So there we come to an end of that. And now I just need to take all the washi tape off and reveal it in all its glory. And so now here we are. We've reached the end of our limited palette color chart. And I've just drawn some little leaves using some of the colors made in the last that are left in my color palette. And I'm going to stick this up on my wall. And I really hope that you've enjoyed this video. And I really want to thank you for watching and for joining me. And I really would like to ask you to leave a comment if you've enjoyed it and to please leave a like and maybe consider sharing the video or some of the videos on my channel with some of your friends. I'm really trying to get more views and it would help me so much if you could do that. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. Bye-bye now.